Blockchain technology is completely changing how we interact with the internet on a day-to-day basis. We're already seeing the shift towards Web 3.0, where we can actually enable the internet of value with cryptocurrency, with you know DeFi, with NFTs, where we can you know actually prove digital scarcity on the blockchain, and that's opening up you know so many different possibilities for what we can actually do with the internet. But in this video, I want to talk about how blockchain is going to change how you and I interact with the internet on a day-to-day basis. That's probably going to happen a lot sooner than you might think. I'm going to talk about that as a blockchain developer who works the Ethereum protocol on a daily basis and what you need to understand about that. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to become a blockchain master step-by-step from start to finish, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so what is this big shift with blockchain technology that's going to change how we use the internet? Well, it's got to do with how we actually log into websites. All right, so let's just look at how we we use websites right now, how we manage usernames and passwords, all that type of stuff. So let's take an example like, you know, YouTube that you're watching right now. So if you are on YouTube and you create an account, you typically sign up with a username and password, and then those credentials get you know encrypted and then stored in YouTube's database. And then anytime that you go access YouTube, you provide your username and password, and they authenticate you and let you log into the website and prove that you are who you say you are. And so then you can manage all the data inside the app, like all your liked videos, your subscribed channels, all that type of stuff is actually tied to your identity with a username and password or an email address and password. But there's some problems with this. You know, first of all, they own your data at this point. They they own your email address, they own your password, and this can be, you know, spread across multiple different services. You actually have to manage your passwords across multiple different different websites. And if you end up reusing a password and one gets compromised and someone has your login to another website, you need an email address to do this. Well, blockchain can completely change how this works and actually create a solution that's more in line with the Web3 vision where you own more of your own data rather than these centralized service providers so that you don't have to just keep creating usernames and passwords for every single account that you interact with. And so what is it? Well, it's actually the ability to log into websites with blockchain. So you can see an example of this on my screen here. This is a really common you know, button that started appearing on websites you know, several years ago where you can start logging in with Facebook. So you go to a website and instead of providing you know, username and password, you just click login with Facebook or maybe login with Twitter, login with Google. And what they do is actually pull your identity information from these centralized service providers like these social media places. And then it hands that data back off to the app and you get a token that represents you on that platform and it reduces some of their friction for signing up for these apps because you already have someone else managing your identity. But there are problems with this and this can completely be fixed with blockchain. So instead of logging with Facebook, you can see something like a button that says log in with Ethereum. So how would that work? Well, the easiest way to do it was we you would have a browser extension like MetaMask installed in your computer. And when you go to a website, you already see, you know, for, for Web3 based applications, you see a thing that says connect with MetaMask and then you allow MetaMask to access that. But you can completely replace the user experience in a website where you see you know, log in with Facebook, log in with Twitter, you could have this completely new option that's just like log in with Web3 or maybe log in with Ethereum. And then it would read your, you know, read your MetaMask address from here. Maybe you could sign a message with your private key to prove that it's you. And now you have access to that entire ecosystem represented by your blockchain address. This is actually a pretty big user experience improvement for people on the network. And so this is one of the reasons I think that this can actually get a lot of good traction is because it, it makes things a lot easier for the end user. Because don't forget, Whenever you're using a blockchain, then you're a user of the entire network. You're not just a user of a specific application. And so it solves this problem of having to like create a username and password every single time that you sign up for a, a website. You just have your private key, which is sort of like your password on the blockchain, and then your address, which is like your username. And so those represent you on the entire network, and those can then represent you on every single application. All you have to do is sign in, sign a message, and you're all done. And it saves you from having to do password management. You don't have to use something like one password password anymore for all these different websites. You don't have to worry about data breaches. You just have to keep your own identity safe. And so one of the reasons I'm actually bringing this up is because this was one of the topics that Vitalik Buterin, you know, the mastermind behind Ethereum, talked about at ETHCC just a few weeks ago. He talked about several emerging trends that are beyond decentralized finance or DeFi that are likely to you know, materialize for Ethereum in the coming months and years. We talked about social media. I just made a video about that on my channel recently and why you know blockchain is ready for these new use cases to take off. But inside of here, you actually talked about decentralized identity and logging in with Ethereum or you know authentication and how it has some really big problems that blockchain can solve. So what are they? Well, basically, he talks about how centralized services are typically the worst of 
both worlds in this scenario. So let's look at a scenario where you're going to a website and it has a login with Facebook button, all right? So the benefit there is it's easier for the end user to just click on this and have to register with email and password, right? So it speeds that process up. It has a benefit from the centralized service provider because you know they can uh, get more data from you. The application can get instant data from you from Facebook as well. So those are all the incentives in play. But Vitalik is basically saying that this is the worst of both worlds. So basically, a centralized service is owning your identity and it's owning your data. You're not owning it as the user like you would in a Web3 paradigm. It's still a very Web2.0 paradigm. Yeah, the risk of arbitrary deplatformings, all the type of censorship we've seen on the web. All right, that's that's part of the the bad the bad side of it. But if you were to think about you know decentralized web three two point or really web three point uh, maybe one of the benefits or problems there is that like you know managing your own identity and self custodying always has a risk of like well you have to bail yourself out if there's a problem and sort of the uh, trade off you would think that in a web 2.0 world well, a custodian somebody who's actually handling your identity or your funds for you would bail you out if you had a problem but he says the reality here is that if you screw up then. Uh, typically they're just not really incentivized to help you and that they're actually too lazy to help you in many cases if you mess up your own identity. And that's been his experience. And so that really negates that assumption. And so those are the reasons that essentially these centralized login providers are the worst of both worlds. They collect all your data, they own it, and they really don't help you if you reach a problem with your identity. But with Ethereum and logging in with you know Web3, then you get other benefits, right? You reduce the friction of signing into websites by just clicking a button as long as you have your Ethereum wallet installed. You get to retain your own data. You don't have to let a centralized party, you know, own everything for you. And as things stand now, you do have the risk of having to manage your own identity. But we're creating new ways all the time to help people recover things like social recovery and a lot more. All right, so let's talk about how this can actually roll out and start being integrated into the world as we know it. So... The first step that I see here is basically this being included on traditional websites to offer people incentives to just log in with Ethereum instead of a different social media platform. I'm not saying it necessarily just instantly replace the social media login buttons, but it probably included to that, right? So that's where you can already see Web 2.0, Web 3.0 start to fuse together. And so I think a lot of time people who are in blockchain kind of have this naive notion that, you know, Web3 is just going to completely take over the world and it's just going to have this separate copy of the internet and people are going to flock from Web2.0 to Web3.0 and just get rid of it completely. And I don't think that's really true. I think we're going to see the two fuse together and this is one way we can do that. And it's kind of some low hanging fruit. So the first way is definitely people being able to log in with blockchain. And so I can see this happening one of two ways. Either we see a login with Web3, all right, as, as a new standard that starts to emerge, or we see something that's called login with Ethereum, okay? And these, these really could be two uh, things that are synonymous one an- with one another, is that we actually use in- Ethereum's encryption standards as the de facto standard for logging in with Web3. So whether it gets named uh, login with Ethereum versus login with Web3 doesn't really matter, but under the hood, it's very likely that we'd use Ethereum standard uh, because this is becoming commonplace. You know, a lot of the blockchain adoption is really happening right now. It's happening on top of the Ethereum network. And so we see all these competitors coming in to try to capture some of that market share. And what's one of the number th- one things that they're doing? Well, they're forking the Ethereum's tools to bootstrap an ecosystem that can try to siphon off some of that activity and liquidity. We've seen that with Binance Smart Chain. We've seen the other you know, EVM compatible chains. Basically, they'll fork the Ethereum virtual machine and change it. So that's really easy for, you know, to port apps over from Ethereum to these new blockchains. Also, wallets are now compatible. If they work on Ethereum, they can work on, you know, Binance Smart Chain, for example. It it reduces the friction and you can see people who have MetaMask already installed. uh, Whenever they open their wallet like this, they can just change the Ethereum network and then enter in a new, uh, you know, endpoint for this brand new network. So this new blockchain. And so that's a reason why I think Ethereum can be a standard for decentralized login. All right. So that's the first step is basically taking decentralized identity as a login, as a single button click and improving the user experience of Web 2.0 websites. So that's the first step. The next step, uh, I can see this actually evolving to actual decentralized identity standard that's built on top of Ethereum or something similar that uses Ethereum encryption under the hood. Okay. So this is right right now, there's a simple initial implementation is just you have an address, that's your identity, you log in, you sign a message or something like that to prove that you uh, control the private key to this address. And that becomes your user of the entire network on this application. But it doesn't really store a lot of data about you, okay? The, the, the Web 2.0 application can still store information associated with your Ethereum address. The next step in the equation, to me, 
will be actually creating some sort of decentralized identity standard where you retain ownership of that data. And so instead of just a really simple example where you all, all the website knows about you now is just your Ethereum address because you signed this message. Well, now you could have all this extra data about you that you could consent to give to the application in specific cases. And we could even enhance this further um, where you could have zero knowledge proofs where the website that can 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 prove something about you without knowing uh, specifically information about you. So what would an example be? Well, let's say uh, a website needed to know your age, all right, and wanted to prove that you were over a specific age, um, but not reveal how old you actually were, okay? So uh, I'm just thinking of a simple example off the top of my head, like, have you ever been to a, a, like a wine and spirits website? Let's say you wanted to order a bottle of wine on the internet, and it, you know, sometimes the websites won't even let you access it unless you agree that you're over 21, that's how it'll get to be in the United States. Um, well, let's use that as an example. Well, with zero knowledge proofs, the website could prove that you were over 21 um, without knowing your actual age. That's a zero knowledge proof. It, that's just an example of how it could work. And of course, we would need standards that help verify your age in order to plug that into these services. But you could take this even further. You know, you could have uh, zero knowledge proofs that guaranteed lots of information about you without revealing what that information actually is. And this would completely open up new possibilities for what we can do with the internet and with these services. This is the part of the real beauty of Web 3.0 in the long term. And so that's step two. You know, step one is basic login with blockchain. Step two is actually decentralized identity management. And step three is really enhancing the user experience of this. So part of it is anywhere that you could, you know, take the private key that controls this information, you could move that to different devices and different environments. So think about like if you use a blockchain wallet on your phone, all you need to do is have your private key and it now can sign transactions for you, just like your MetaMask extension on your desktop. Um, you can just move the accounts around because that's the whole thing. That information you're, you know, isn't stored on a blockchain. It just gets you access to sign transactions in the blockchain and prove that you uh, have ownership over that account. So step three is really enhancing the user experience of this where, you know, let's say you want to sign a transaction. Well, instead of typing in a password every time, or some sort of passcode, now you can do it with a, you know, fingerprint scanner on your phone, or maybe, you know, your facial recognition software. And we could do this in a very, uh, you know, trusted way where you're not giving this information over to a third party uh, centralized service who's like, you know, mining this data or storing it or selling it or something like that. Or, you know, your your authentication that translates your face or your thumbprint on your stays on your device completely. And basically, that's going to give you access to sign transactions with that private key. And so that'll be a user improvement experience that can enhance this as well, that completely op opens up the opportunity for what you know we can do with Web 3.0 long term. All right, so that's all I've got for today. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. That really helps these videos out so the more people can learn about blockchain. You know, if you're as fascinated with this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? Well, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find any of my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, I can show you to become a blockchain master step-by-step -step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.